Oh, 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 oh skinny wiener. <laughs> Let me down over there. Jay right? Wayne had a nice pop, and then Casey's just... Well, I do have to say that we're recording on a Saturday, and I do not have a, a revelry beer in this koozie right now. Oh. I, I, I'm, slum, <laughs> I'm, I'm slumming it. <laughs> slumming it Saturdays is what I like to call it. Mm. And I, I just wasn't feeling the craft beer for a second, so I went with a bush. Crickets. Mm. They got a good commercial. Not a good pop, though. No, it wasn't was like bad. A, was, like, was it was it because it was, was that a bush like pop? Two point one on the pop oh, scale. Mm. I mean, that might not even rate. Yeah, I'm not even sure that registered Mm-mm. because I, I, I used to be a big fan of the copper top. We used to drink a lot of copper tops when I was a younger man, and I was like, <laughs> well, "Younger man, let me get some. Let me get some. Let me get some bush." Grocery store right around the corner had bush. It was super cheap, and I was like, "Well." I think it's got to be in a keg. Let's go for it. I think it's got to be in a keg. I'm drinking the super delicious Never Sunny. Well, and I, and to be fair, from I, the revelries, I was planning on having a long night in front of me, so mm. I, I didn't want to go on the seven percenter craft beers right away. Good point. Trying to, I mean, I'm not 21 anymore. I'm 31. <laughs> that 10 years really makes a difference on how you need to start your night. You're telling me, buddy. The day before, you need to start prepping on hydration. Right. <laughs> Been drinking water all week for this. <laughs> the day after is a whole nother story. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Like before you go to bed, yeah. you better wrap that. And then you know what? I can't I like? be too drunk to pee. Or I, anything. And you know what I like? I like ice cream before I go to bed. For whatever reason, it ice seems cream. to really knock my stomach issues out the next day. It really just you, you puts just a nice baseline in there. Fighting fire with fire. Is that how you I, do I it? I don't know, but it just seems to work. Usually, throw some dairy in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, dairy, late night dairy and meat do not mix, but it's nice. This is post the, drink. Uh, You're not yeah, about the yeah, pre drink. Before not I go to sleep. Before. This is like fall asleep with the ice cream tub on your chest and a spoon <laughs> in it. Mm. Usually That's better than falling asleep with the stove on. <laughs> I would a, never <laughs> waste ice cream. Come on, come on. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm I not did work trying at, to. I worked at Dairy Queen though as a as a young lad. Yeah, that was my first job. It's my first job. My first job was the same job I have now. It's just a lot lower on the totem pole. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But I anyhow. mean, I'm still making ice cream. <laughs> Had an ice cream cake for my birthday. That shit was delicious. Yeah, you know what? It wasn't my favorite. Psh. <laughs> Psh. I you're like the, you're I like invited. The, I like the little chocolate ants in my ice cream cake. I want a I want a classic Carvel ice cream cake with the little chocolate ants. This thing was. It wasn't a bad Oreo ice cream cake. I no, was it cake yours, ice cream your birthday with layers of cake that and ice cream. That Ooh. was a solid solid birthday. Shout ice cream out to cake. Cold Stone. Yeah, yeah. Was, that was solid. I mean, I usually am a big Cold Stone Marble Slab fan. I like the sweet. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's a difference. The sweet cream with the uh, raspberry blueberry mixed right in there. I know you're not a fruit and ice cream guy. That's a whole other mm, discussion. You got a Cold Stone versus Marble Slab difference off the top of your oh, head? Oh, yeah. Hit, Cold hit. Stone all day. Okay. <laughs> I don't care either one. I didn't know. It's didn't. about the birthday cake ice cream. He likes me. the birthday cake remix. Gotcha. Yeah. Basic I will say your birthday party. Basic like, Wayne over there. Most of the times... <laughs> I dodge the <laughs> the cakes if you know because they're usually not that great, but yours was banging. I want to be remembered for Bert for ice cream cake. If I invite you to a party, probably gonna be ice cream cake. <laughs> I like it. That's All right, I'm, well, I'm gonna be known for. Welcome back. You can find us on the Twitters at the FF Dynasty. We all have personal handles. You can find Big Co at Dynasty Big Co. Jay Wayne's at Jay Wayne's World. I'm at IMC Myers. <laughs> What you got? Jay Wayne just gave the camera some solid <laughs> eyebrows. <laughs> and I just wasn't ready for that. I just wasn't ready. I don't know if anyone will see this video or not, but this we're doing a dry run. I like it. You we're might hear a difference. We're in a different room. New gotta, space, bigger ceilings, a yep. little, little larger area. So. We'll get this echo figured out. Yeah, but, we'll work uh, on it. Jay Wayne just got a brand new house and uh, yeah. threw us in the, in the extra man cave here. And it, we're expanding the, uh, the operation. About Big to hit time. some full-on video action, so we'll add another layer to things. You'll get to see us. I'm a hand talker, so I've, yeah. I like to be able to... And I like to work with my eyebrows. Throw those Obviously. Kind of things in there. And, uh, <laughs> that'd be mostly for the YouTubes, though. So if you're if you're regular on the podcast and you don't hit up the YouTubes, should be a good time. Or GFY. Ooh. All right. <laughs> so. GFKY? No. No. Sorry. No, kind no, no, no K. No, K is killing. Go. No, it's... <laughs> KGFY. Kindly. G F K Y. Kindly go. Kindly. Oh. Uh, censor F yourself. Your, yeah. Uh -huh. Got it. All right. Well, censor it now. Solid. Uh, well, we might have to deal with the FCC soon. I don't know. 
No, no, no. We're not on national television. <clears throat> I'm just kidding. All right. So we've been we're talking about combine and rookies. Um, so I figured that would be a, a decent discussion to bring in kind of last year's crop of rookies and weigh them a little bit against this year's crop of rookies. <clears throat> Obviously, you have Saquon, who is, doesn't even need to be involved in this conversation. So we'll start at Geis, carry on Chubb, Sony, Lindsay, and we'll be in that kind of area right now. And we just want to see where the top one or two guys uh, kind of factor into this situation here. Now, Rodney Anderson, we I mentioned on the uh, before the break that I think if he wouldn't have got hurt, I think he could have been in the discussion for the one one. He's currently kind of around my third running back. Um, but he probably won't quite make the cut in this conversation. I think we're mostly going to be talking about Josh Jacobs and depending on what round Montgomery goes in and where he lands, he, he could be in the discussion. I'm a big Montgomery believer. Um, so let's start with, with Geis. Would you take Josh Jacobs over Geis? Would you trade that situation for... Obviously, we don't know where any of these guys are landing right now. And we'll slowly work down this totem pole here. I think that's, I, I know the least of, 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 from the three of us about these guys, about the new rookies, but I I think that's right. an easy I mean, pass. You, so you yeah. got to start with I, a little softball here. Sure. Toss up. I mean, I think it's an easy pass to, to, I'm keeping Geis over anybody in this class. Right. So Geis is, we've talked about this before, mostly on the Patreon show that we would all tr pretty much trade the one, one for Geis and to keep it moving here, carry on and Chubb, we pretty much would trade the one, one for those guys as well. I would. Right. Yes. Everyone's in agreement here. We're all kind of in that C -C. in that club. All right. Well, so the next kind of line of demarcation here would be, I would say, Sony Michelle or Lindsay, however you feel about uh, those two players here. And this is where it starts to get interesting for me. Would you take Josh Jacobs over Sony Michelle? Would you trade that pick and to get the rights to Josh Jacob right now? Obviously, we don't know where he's going to land and what's going to happen and what the pro day is even going to be like. But right now, let's just say he's the consensus kind of first running back off the board, even though I still like Montgomery more than he did. Call me stupid or whatever, but I'm still I still like Montgomery more than Jacobs. Do you want Sony Michelle or do you want Josh Jacobs right now? That's a that's a very strong question. Uh, I, I love Sony Michelle, love the player, love the prospect coming out so of college before both of you guys were in camp Sony. So if this was last year, it would have been Chubb would have been the guy in Sony's position right now that, you know, you understand what I'm saying there? Like, oh, well, back when it was Sony yeah, and Chubb. Yeah, you got it was it you was guys were kind of on a little bit more on so, the Sony so side. close, but I was I was right. calling Sony. Yeah, over, yeah, 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 yeah. But so currently we all agree that Sony's a notch below Chubb. Yeah, I, I think you I think. First of all, obviously, Kareem Hunt just went over there and create and kind of made that situation a little crazy, barring to figure mm -hmm. out how long the suspension will be, and and maybe even if he's still in the roster, how they decide to play that. Um, but you know, Baker and Chubb were a, a nice little duo over there. Baker was getting things done offensively, moving the ball around, and Chubb was making those explosive, explosive plays. And not that Sony couldn't have, but he really didn't break off too many big ones and when Chubb right. Chubb's got a 90 yarder and a 60 yarder and a couple of 40s those those are huge runs and huge like piling points on top of points right and the every time the Patriots decided and when Sony was healthy and the Patriots it was a Sony game he crushed 100 and 100 and a touch or more every single time right it he really didn't give you too many of those you know bad games unless it was in and out on that ankle injury or what have you. So uh, Sony's Sony did, Sony's not getting enough love. Oh, I think Sony's getting plenty of love. I think I don't think so. I think I think in the situation that it's the situation that is hurts Sony Michelle. The situation obviously yeah, Kareem Hunt's in Cleveland, but he's probably not going to be heard from for the better part of this season. Probably. Um and Sony Michelle's in New England and we just when Sony Michelle gets 8 for 80 and no touchdowns, and he doesn't really catch the ball in this current situation that he's in. He gets you eight points. Yeah, and not that I, it's not a knock on Sony Michelle. It's in the, the fact that he's in Patriot Land right now, and it's just they're so they're one of the only teams who does it how most teams should be doing it. Right, and be able to so, kind of whatever this team does well, we're going to kind of play off that, and we have the personnel to switch it up and do these things differently, which great for them. But sometimes for the fantasy asset, it's not that great. 
And and then on top of that, you have Tommy, who you don't know when. Obviously, he's not the dominant Tom Brady that maybe he once was, but he's still better than smarter. Again, he can switch it up regardless of what's going on. Exactly. So that's I think that the what what the difference between Sony and Chubb is. Not to mention, I think Chubb is is I I liked Chubb better as a player in general. You did. You were uh, you were strong taking Chubb over Sony when when it came down to those battles and you know we. I think both Big Co and I were taking Sony, and may, maybe we flipped here or there. But when then when he went to the Patriots, we thought that was pretty awesome compared to Chubb to the Browns. And sure, it took them trading Carlos Hyde, and and Nick Chubb just being freaking awesome. Well, just, what's that say just, about Nick Chubb? You traded Carlos Hyde to, to make sure you, this guy behind you was right. You couldn't right. deny it. So I'm mm-hmm. not going to argue now. I'm I'm but they brought in Kareem Hunt. So. Definitely taking it's Chubb. Smart business move. Yeah. When you ask me, Chubb or Sony? Uh, so Jacobs or Sony? And I, I don't think there's a Jacobs or Chubb conversation here, right? No, we already answered. Not that. for me. We would trade the one one for Chubb, so there there goes your Chubb versus. Agreed, Jacobs. agreed. I mean, potentially situation wise, after the NFL draft, there might be something that jumps off the page. If the Browns say, "Hey, Kareem Hunt's, we're going to have a one two duo because that's we got a cap space and we're going to pay him a lot of money and use him and Chubb." Uh, potentially, there could but be. They don't have to pay him a lot of money because he's a third round draft pick. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I don't even know how that – maybe throw that out the water because he got cut one time, and yeah, now and you start over with a new new dra- Yeah, he's got – New uh, contract. He's just got whatever contract they signed him to, so right. it's not his rookie deal. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that uh, – I think I probably lean Jacobs here. I. It's not – and it's nothing to do with if Sony as a player. I like Sony as a player, but it's just the Patriots, and it's, it's the headache of having one of their running backs – and the potential of him getting game scheme game planned out of a of a scheme, and it could be a James White game, and and he could get you, you know, he could really do well with with the hundred yards on twenty carries and get you ten points. Yeah. Uh. So, I think I'm ready. I think I want to take that gamble on Jacobs, and even even before seeing where he lands, and obviously a landing spot could be like, oh, we definitely got to have Jacobs or. Maybe you don't want him at all. I don't know. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think he's got name cachet. I think he's going to hold his value. I think people love him. I love him, and uh, I think I would. I think I would loan. I would lean Josh Jacobs if he ha- if you if he ha- if I would trade you Sony Michelle to get you know the one one or one two. I, I don't know. You're probably going to need a pick in the top three to get Jacobs, and three might not be enough to get Jacobs. I. Yeah. Everybody wants to talk about wide receivers, but when when we're in rookie drafts, it's running backs. Like I, right. it's and always especially, running backs. Especially so, if, if Jacobs goes to a decent situation and right. tests well at the pro day or whatever. So I'm down to take Jacobs. I, I think Sony would still be the guy that I would want in this situation. Number one, I've I've seen him play well. Again, it's not the it's not Sony not being a good player. It's the situation a little bit, but I would still feel more comfortable with Sony being on a good team and being mostly usable week in, week out. Some weeks it's not going to be great, but for the most part, I think he'll be, you know, pretty pretty usable uh, for the foreseeable future. So I would stick with with Michelle in this situation. Uh, you also over, don't know what's going to happen with the Patriots. Jacobs. I mean, I know we've been talking about Patriots and Tommy and Bill going for years now, and I guess I wouldn't be surprised if they hung around for another five years and this conversation is irrelevant. But True. there is the... There is that dynasty at some point ending. Well, Tommy's already said he wants to play a few more years, and he's not. He'll go until yeah. he can't so go. What would you I guess, do? I guess it doesn't matter. Big I, I mean, I like what you said. I think it's it is a tougher call when Rex Burkhead's healthy. There's no doubt about it. When Rex Burkhead's healthy, you he's going to catch passes, and Sony Mich- or, uh James White's going to catch passes. Right, and, and and that's what hurts. That's what hurts the most with Sony Michelle. It is because they are they they're so good with their schemes and their play calls, and they'll you know you saw it in the Super Bowl all week long. We heard about the potential for James White to crush against that defensive line because they didn't really play run defense and this and that, and you know the checkdowns to James White were, was going to be just off the charts. And then the Patriots first drive, James White's nowhere to be seen and it's Rex Burkhead. Mm-hmm. And, and the two games before that, when they dominated the chargers and the chiefs, they pounded you with Sony Michelle. Like, you know, it's, it's the flip. It's the flip right. of the switch. They, they got this switch that they can flip and they're going this way or they're going that way. Just like Jay said, it is the headache of the Patriots, but you, you still, 
you still got to think. I mean, they they got their they got their Super Bowl, so everything they did last year worked. I mean, as far as bad as it looked at some points, they sent, spent the first round pick, late first round pick on a running back. They got their Super Bowl. Sony plowed through the first couple rounds of the playoffs. Did what he needed to do for them. It's like we said when he made that pick. It's like, all right, well, maybe Tommy's just getting Tommy's older. Let's lean on the running game. Tommy can go into that third down mode anytime he needs. He can go into that quick pass and throw it to Julian Edelman, get us a couple first downs all the way down the road, all the way down the field anytime he needs to. But having Sony Michelle, and maybe it would have been a lot more consistent, Sony Michelle, if he hadn't have been hurt and missed that preseason stuff with the knee. And then he's well, that's, in yeah, and that, out for a couple of weeks. That was going to be my closing point on Sony Michelle is that you didn't even get to see a right. full see, gambit of Sony Michelle being all the way involved in everything that was going on with the Patriots. There was that. You know, exactly. And which I think that probably saps some of his explosiveness because in college he was a knifing explosive player. That which and is one of the reasons why I liked him so much. And you didn't see those big plays, which you hit on earlier. And he didn't get to practice with the team while he was out for those four right. crucial, crucial weeks of, right. of the Bill Belichick system. Hey, and maybe is, just speculating, maybe that could, maybe you could then see a little bit more confidence in a passing game from him. It wasn't a thing that he really did in Georgia, at Georgia regardless neither one of those backs really did yeah they but didn't throw it to he the didn't backs. really have a chance to get acclimated in any sort of a passing down role with them mm-hmm. um, and as long as Dante Scarnecki is back and though they drafted a uh, Isaiah Wynn who Blows was his out. Uh, guy from which Georgia. I think they're going to end up moving him to tackle or at least that was the plan um we didn't see any of him Never and, played and if snap. Dante Scarnecki is there the the Offensive line is going to be good. That guy should be the highest paid right. offensive line coach, bar none in the league. From the time when he left the Patriots and then them boys made him come back, <laughs> the line was awful. And they're, now they're perennially always does, regardless of who's the guy there, they're always good. Mm-hmm. So if that guy's around, the run game's going to be good. Mm-hmm. And so I, I would stick with Sony in that situation. So what are you doing? You, t- you sticking with Sony there, Bico? Did you answer that question? I mean,. Pre NFL draft, give me Sony Michelle. Yeah, I, I mean this guy could you know be drafted by the Montreal Alouettes or something. You know, some we might not. I mean, be there's excited. really only a couple ridiculous landing spots that could really want me to sway this situation. And Carlos Hyde just got signed by the Chiefs. Not that that really does anything for Josh Jacobs or the Chiefs would have spent, which would, could be the only first round running back on Josh Jacobs here. Um, but I mean, maybe like the Saints could be losing Mark Ingram and maybe they get Josh Jacobs and then it's like, oh, well, yeah, mm-hmm. sure. I would trade this pick or maybe he goes to the Bears and now yeah. I'm excited. But, yeah. you know, there's only a couple of really huge destinations that I would be really, really excited with. But for the most part, I'm going to stick with Sony and a, and a good franchise. Um, not that I absolutely love Sony in the situation, but uh, in any, any given week, he's got three touchdowns, right? They're going to get to the goal line more often, as often as anybody in the league. Maybe, maybe nowadays you got you're looking at the Rams and those types of guys and the Chiefs that are getting there a little bit more often than the Tommy Brady led Patriots. But for the last 15 years, they've gotten the most inside to five rushing attempts for running backs. Yeah. So you can probably probably count on and some, some you know more Rex of those. gets back in there and some of those might maybe get vultured a little bit and you got Devlin who vultured plenty of Sony Michelle touchdowns at, at points during when he was there. Um, so at the end of the day, we got uh, basically two for Sony currently. Big Co seemed a little bit more on the fence than I, and Jay Wayne's going uh, Jacobs the, over I'll take Sony. Take the gamble. Taking the, taking the, you got the fever. Yeah. Got the fever. Well, Jay Wayne likes the new guys. Let's wrap this up. We'll uh, take another quick break. We'll be back with some more rookie talk for your pleasure. All right. Welcome back from our short little break there. Nice to see you guys again. See what I did there? Because we can see you. Well, maybe not this time, but we're getting to the point where we can see you. Going to get used to it. We're doing Uh, a trial run. Make sure to go check out the website, www.theffdynasty.com. We got uh, Jay's been working really hard on uh, rookie pages, so a lot of cool stuff to see. You got the spider charts on there and all the rookie breakdowns that we've had and all the tape that you can watch and the Roto World information, all that kind of stuff, anything we've said about them. Um, we so only have pages for guys we've broken down right. yet so far, so we're a little 
maybe maybe not quite behind, but a little bit behind on breaking down, guys. And yeah. uh, we got more loaded up in the chamber. We just released Jacobs and Harris, so go check that out. And we got Singletary and uh, Sanders, Miles Sanders coming soon. So, so we just talked about Sony Michelle, and I kind of just took at liberty that I was putting Sony as ahead of Lindsay, and I, I thought that we would all maybe feel the same Jacobs? way. Jacobs, no, Sony ahead of Lindsay, just in like an oh, overall, Lindsay? like yeah overall ranking i don't know if you feel that way but i'm pretty sure you feel that way big co yeah i got it hates lizzie i don't hate Lindsay. i don't know if you feel that way or yeah, not I'll take, so, I'll, I'll take sony okay yeah philip Lindsay just went for a thousand yards 10 touchdowns and caught 30 something balls yeah i, I mean so, uh, sure but you're just, well, still taking sony we'll, we'll get to it here okay so same question josh jacobs montgomery kind of range here or philip Lindsay. I, I, you got you. Do you want it first, or do you? We want to go hater or lover. <laughs> I mean, I love Lindsay, I love Lamp, but I I'm, I'm going to give it to Big Co first. I Since get you went first last, so would you take Josh Jacobs or David Montgomery, uh, however you, or or either or both over Philip Lindsay? Um, how would how do you how do you have that? So we got the tried and true production of a good one year. No doubt. You can't take it away from him. My name, Nobody sold on my him. Man, my Royce man, Freeman is going to be all the man. My man balled out in a in tough situation uh-huh. as far as quarterback and Terrible getting, offense. getting the ball going down the field. Good run game, though. So we got a solid. Musgraves isn't there anymore. He's out. Solid one year production out of the undrafted 5'8", 190 back versus the new, you know, blustery shiny objects i think i got a gamble on josh jacobs and david montgomery over philip Lindsay. so you're taking both of those guys over Lindsay. i mean obviously we don't know what's going to happen in the draft if montgomery goes in the fifth round to schmohawks over here you know maybe it's not as fun but currently right now i I would agree with you will be as fun but i mean Lindsay's on the broncos and he didn't even get drafted he made it work so it's yeah i agree so you're 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 why why are you in what 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 are the give me you got any because he hates Lindsay you got well, any well, bullet points I mean, here? <laughs> because it, because it's not since Arian Foster did a guy come in off the street uh, undrafted and and actually stick around for more than you know a flash in the pan um, and it was a nice nice flash last year out of Philip Lindsay he and flashed I'll, inside the pan out of the pan, <laughs> he's out of this frying pan into the fire how about that meatloaf yeah there Drink. you go uh-huh. so right. I'm enough. not saying. I, I, it's just it's been ten years since this has happened. More than for t- Royce a, ten, had a little Nick more than a twelve him. game stretch. In that beginning, you know? they were kind of sharing things, and Royce wasn't looking terrible. We've seen we've seen guys do well in either after somebody got hurt and had a second half of the season or a couple of games at the end of the year. Lindsey did do it for most of the entire season. He looked good doing it. Can't take it away again. I've yeah. already said that. I just feel like he'd be making history. He already, he already made history. He's first mm-hmm. undrafted free agent rookie Can we just throw that to go out, offensive Pro Bowl. Can we Defensive throw? guys have done that before. Nobody's done that on the offensive side of the ball. It was obviously a mistake by all the teams that he didn't get drafted. Seven times. He, like, can't can't uh, can't we throw that out the window now based on what he did? Can we just forget that he was an undrafted and quit using that as a uh, anything? Well, as a reason for anything? I mean... Well, look what he did on the field. He's still five net five eight one ninety. Well, look what he did on the five, field. Five seven, probably. It just means he's thicker. You know, yeah. you get shorter, you can be lighter. Yeah, Tariq Cohen's smaller than that, but he's see thick yeah. up. Five six, and he's a PPR back. Maybe not really much of a believer in Lindsay on the repeat. Oh, I, I, I do hates think, I think that there's. I don't hate I think Lindsay. You hate him. I think that there'll be a little bit no more reason. Royce Freeman Everyone involved. Everyone hates Lindsay. He kept rock. He kept coming going. out of, off off the line just like a rocket. I mean, you can't take it. He, he looked good. He looked awesome. I went back and watched some Royce Freeman game, and I, I think that uh, Royce Freeman looks good. We I liked him coming out of college, went to bat for him, was, was a pro drafting him. Maybe not as hot and heavy as he, he got right there in the preseason. Just give it up. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Nope. Gosh, I'm not even going to mention that. You didn't the even commercials put it. can't make up for any of that. No, mm-hmm. nope. nope. Get bad pop on the bush. Rid nope. of it. Anyways, so question, same question to you. It seems like you've already kind of answered it. <coughs> Josh I did Jacobs answer because I, I, if I'm taking Sony over Phil Lindsay, but then I'm taking Josh Jacobs over Sony, then you know, if A, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. So I'll take Josh Jacobs 
over what are you, some sort of analytics guy now? <laughs> no, I just know math. <laughs> just because you know math doesn't mean you have to be an analytics guy. I actually spent like a whole weekend in my condo trying to, f- like when I first got into fantasy football, because I know how to do spreadsheets and I'm really good at math. And like I tried to figure out the formula to, to figure out fantasy football. And after the weekend was over, I was like, man, I just lost the whole weekend. I didn't learn anything out of that. <laughs> this is, And then I bought Game Pass. Because I wanted to know if a guy looked good or not. And I watched him play, and he looked good. And I picked him up, put him on my team, and and scored points. And I was like, that wasn't that hard. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to make it way harder than it needs to be. But that's that's what they say about us. So, uh, Sure. I, uh, I I think I got to take Jacobs. And, and I think I still got to take Montgomery, too, over Phil Lindsay. I mean, he just, he's, he's a... <sighs> He just is. He looks like what a prototypical three down back workhorse looks like. And yeah, Lindsey doesn't look like that. But when you watch him on the field, he he produced like that. And he, it wasn't just it wasn't just big plays or big catches. He only had thirty five catches, right. which is seems like a small number compared to what you th- might think he did. Of course, he did miss like he didn't play week seventeen and and he missed the whole game because he threw a fake punch, which was bogus call, but right. whatever. Uh, missed most of that game. It happened early in the first quarter, so he's down some game time, but still only 35 catches. Not that there was a ton of catches to go around. That offense was terrible. Mm-hmm. But the, that that's, should be another great point to Lindsey. So I, I don't understand. I see all over the place. Like I see it in in emails, and I see it on, on, on our Patreon account, and I see it on Twitter. It's just like people are not sold on Lindsey, and I don't understand how he can't be sold on this dude that was just knifing through entire defenses. All year long. All year long. 16 what? games. What's the reason, Big 15. Because he's a sizist or something. Cause oh, and you were out initially, and you're sticking to that, like, well, I, I was wrong initially, but I'm going to just stand by this. Yeah, no, he's so ride he's it good. out. He no. Got, he, just, he got back in at a point, and then, but he, it was, I, it was just, he just stuck a toe in. There's a decent chance <laughs> I could beat him. It was too cold, and he ran back. <laughs> decent chance I could beat him in arm wrestling. He's, just, no, no, way. Chance. He'd crush no you. chance. No chance. No, I, I got good Phil form. Wins, he hit us I up. got good no form. No chance. I got good no form. No chance. He'd send his sister in to beat you. You got to keep, you got to keep it. Tight, <laughs> keep it tight. We've I all got, seen over the top. Yeah, <laughs> it's, about, it's about the wrist bend. <laughs> <laughs> You're so, not beating Philip Lindsay in an arm. No way. It'd be close. Philip Lindsay would dominate you. It'd be Crush close. you. Make you a believer. So, I'm. I would. I'm with Big Co. I. Th- I, I think, think I, I would, still got to take David Montgomery and Josh. Aker. I would. I would. Uh, you. You were ahead of Sony with that, and I'm. I'm gonna. I'm drawing the line. With with Sony here, not because I don't not believe that Sony will have a decent career from here on out, but I do think Royce Freeman will factor in here, and uh, I I, th- I think Royce Freeman, like you said, we went to bat for him, had plenty of conversations of, about Royce Freeman. He was a good all around player, well, yeah, just a, a really solid all around. He was the Tahoe, player. got yeah, right, nothing he was, special. He was the Tahoe, got it done. Well, the Rolls Royce now is what they want him to be, but right, but I I think I think that whole factor back into what, what's going on. I think Philip Lindsay will still. Uh, be around, but I think I would rather have the Montgomery or the or the uh, or the Josh Jacobs. And some people might get upset about the Montgomery in this situation because he didn't test good, and they're all bent out of shape. He didn't about, test well. About yeah, sure. <laughs> all bent out of shape about uh, you know that yeah, kind of stuff. But give me I'm, Montgomery at one five now because he didn't test well. Exactly. I mean, yeah. it, and we kind of touched on that a little bit when we were talking about the combine. But I mean. That's really what it's going to come down to. If you're going to give me David Montgomery in the one five position, I'm I'm all in. And you know, I've I've seen trades go down with the better half of one five being traded for Lindsay. So, what's really the difference? And then, you know, just just the way the rest of these guys in here after this conversation ends, um, it's Penny, it's Royce, it's Josh Adams, it's Rojo, it's Ito Smith, kind of all those kind of guys, and not, none of those guys factor in. Like clearly, I would take uh, either one of these top two guys over them. Uh, how about it, would any, you take Rodney Anderson over Penny? Psh, all day, <laughs> <laughs> every damn day. And we don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. We don't know how the medical. But I am a Penny up. hater, and I'll admit it. So I mean, I think right this second, I gotta take. I'll take Penny on that biggest run first offense in the league. And the opportunity that may be in his in his way right here with the you know first round draft capital and 
big, you know, they've much improved their blocking and their tight. They brought in blocking tight ends and picked the best blocking tight end in the, in the draft last year. Who ended up not playing, but he'll he'll be back. So don't forget about Will Disley. Yeah, yeah I, I I would take who was, Penny who was, right now. Who was really trending upwards before he got hurt. Because I think because of Rodney Anderson's injuries, I think he's hardly known. Yeah, I, you know, I I think right That's now you, fair. you take Penny and then you grab Rodney I, Anderson. But I I, re- I I want the I want the I want Rodney Anderson a lot, but I don't think he's going to be anywhere near the Penny range. Sure, of where you need to take Rodney Anderson. So I think until I, he gets drafted high by a good team or something. I yeah. Mean, well, we'll see how. All I just want to hear about these combine medicals. All <laughs> these kind of stuff plays out. But what are they doing? I I do really like Rodney Anderson. Is there any is there any other running backs that you would take over over? Let's just say the Penny and the Royces of last year. Yeah, right I now? mean I'll take Damian Harris. Yeah. And I'll I mean, give me Betty Snell. I mean all all of these guys. Ooh. All like Penny's still going relatively high. I'm in a, taking in a Rash- startup. I would rather have Betty Snell than Rashad Penny. And and in that sense, not you're not me. people. Are you're gonna not hate saying that. people are going to hate. Well, you're not. But, uh, that, but just to clear it up, like you're not saying like where Penny's going that you would take one of those guys over Rashad Penny because he is going still pretty high. You can get those guys at a, at a discounted rate from where Penny's going right now, but you would rather have them on your team than Rashad Penny. So like, you're just not drafting Penny at the point where he's being drafted Mm-mm. and you would just rather wait a little while yeah, and Penny's have those guys on your team. Fourth, Penny, yeah. Fourth, fifth, fourth, round, fifth still. round startup. So and still and hanging around. If I could trade you Penny for a first round pick, I would still do it. And then I would take one of these running backs that I like. Right. I uh, mean, a startup Penny's fourth, fifth round and Benny Snell's going to be 10th I, And round. I get, you don't have to take Benny Snell in the first round pr- yet. Yeah. It's not, he's not there yet, but I'll, just a, tra- I'll take draft. that first round in a pick. And draft you're talking about. Right. And I'll trade out and get Ben. ben and when Jay says yet, the early rookie drafts, he probably won't be there at all. But the late rookie drafts, if you see him busting off in first or second weeks of preseason. In a good situation. In a good situation. Drafted or, higher than you ever thought he would be. Maybe not even in a good situation, but then all of a sudden he can turn it into a good situation if he's out there busting off in a preseason. And they're like, hey, this guy's actually really, really good. Mm-hmm. He oh oh he he ran a four six forty but he actually knows where to cut when to cut how to cut right lower the shoulder good feet mm-hmm. pass protection mm-hmm. what capable well, catch don't ask Matt Miller because that guy just tore old Benny Snell up I don't know what he was watching because he didn't it wasn't he, the same shit I was watching he was probably watching Pollard right I don't <laughs> I don't know what he was watching but we're not on the same page nah not at all probably why he's blocked by or so he blocks so many people <laughs> on Twitter because they. They go at him a lot because uh, you bring uh, bring a uh, exhibit A, right? And it's not what he was thinking. We got two more things to kind of close up shop with here. One, I I want to we would do when I end up with Cl- uh, Carlos Hyde because while we were uh, here on Saturday, the news broke about Carlos, so we might as well touch on that for a little bit without any crazy investigation on him. Um, but I do I do want to talk about just like when you're drafting rookies, is there w- would you rather swing for the fences? in the whole rookie draft or is there a spot where you kind of stop swinging for the fences or are you kind of playing a little more safe? Like in a startup, we're kind of telling you just don't fuck it up. Um, and then there's spots where, you know, maybe you take a couple of swings here or there as things progress down the line a little bit. And sometimes you're forced to take that shot a little earlier. Um, but more so in a rookie draft, are you, are you swinging for the fences the whole time? I know, I know Big Co. That, that's that's probably a little bit more your strategy in that situation. It is for is the, there a, and then and is there a spot where you maybe tone it back down a little bit and and go well obviously and conservative. Obviously, that's a loaded question, but sure. Uh, we a lot of like on our Patreon page. How many times have you seen somebody list their draft picks and they got like one three, one eight, one nine, something like that? You know, so if you got if you just got one draft pick you know you haven't traded much or whatever however it falls out and you got the one two or the one six or the one ten obviously your options are limited the later back you get into mm-hmm. your in your draft pick but if you have if i have just my one draft pick i'm obviously i'm i'm probably looking for a running back unless i have no choice and i and, think that's probably mitigating some of your risk yeah i'm probably i'm probably that's fair I, i'm i'm for the most part i want to sh- I, I like what I, I like the way you'd set that up because it is kind of I I really do like to try to not mess up the 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 startup as far as 
backing off, coming through five, six, eight rounds of a dynasty startup. I don't care if I have any rookies or not. I'm not reaching super young. I'm not going super old one way or the other. Even if I'm trying to win now, we talked about this on the Patreon show a couple weeks ago. You can get out. You can have a Devontae Adams and a Juju Smith-Schuster or whatever studs that are helping you win now and still super young studs or whatever. So if, in, a, in a rookie draft, I'm getting away from don't messing it up and don't, you know, not messing it up and trying to get that best, pl- you know, not necessarily best player available, but highest ceiling because you want to hit a home run. I do want to focus on that. But those times, if you have like the one six and the one eight or the one two, one five, one eleven or whatever, you try, obviously the earlier the pick, you're assumably getting, getting somebody with a higher ceiling anyway. That's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. But somewhere in there, you're like, all right, I can take this guy safe. It's an asset or it's somebody, some people like him, half the, half the community love him to death. So if it's not a home run in the first 12 months, I still have that some There's name, some name equity, in, uh, some, cachet. Yeah. Give me some brand equity on somebody that I might not be a hundred percent in love with, but I know half the room loves to death, that type of thing. So I, I will go back and forth on swinging for the fences versus a little safety Obviously, a lot of it has to do with your team. If you're a good team, you can you're definitely swinging for the fences. And if you're a bad team, you should probably still be swinging for the fences. Right. You know, you still want to hit a home run, but there's nothing wrong with a couple of doubles. It's mm, just yeah. depending on where you, you don't want to. You're not hitting a. You're, you're not looking for a double if you're picking it to one three, one four. You're looking for a home run. If you're at the one eight, one nine, one ten, there's nothing wrong with trying to get a a stand up triple or something fun like that. Yeah. It doesn't. You don't have to knock it out of the park. Just don't, you know, sometimes you take a guy who's just complete swing and then, you know, you fall out of your cleats, ball, bats you on the say, ground. If you're in the one eight one nine, and are you taking the guy that you're, you're kind of supposed to take there? Or are you, are you like, well, let, let's, let's say a couple of years ago, you know, maybe you were at the one eight or, or so, and it was the Kamara draft and OJ Howard was there. And I, th- I think, I feel like he was maybe a little higher up consensus wise mm-hmm. than maybe the Kamara's in the hunts of the world. So uh, were you kind of more so staying in your lane at that point or were you, were you maybe swinging a little harder and going with the running back situation? Obviously it's con- roster construction a little bit, but OJ Howard was one of those kind of transcendent players at, yeah. that, at that point in time. That's a good point. That we have a team where that year we had the we didn't have a first round pick. The prior year we had traded everything. We got Zeke and Bell on the same team. We had just won the championship, coming off a championship, and we traded into the one eight spot and took OJ Howard. And we didn't have any other spot. We didn't have any other draft picks early because we had really built a conglomerate right there. And these are early. These are early drafts, and this is an FFPC that was an FFPC team. early team. This was a couple years ago. We traded into the one eight during the draft to take OJ Howard. And but we didn't have any of other other spots. And in that in in that year's class, I did a lot of Alvin Kamara at one ten, one twelve, and two one. I got him in those three types of draft picks. And I, obviously, hindsight being twenty twenty, we would all take a ha- Kamara at one 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 two one three where need be. But I felt like I was there was a couple times where I wasn't letting him get past me if I could get him on the clock. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, that was just one time I got, I think I got maybe a little lucky too. Uh, you know, you've, there's plenty of times where I was like, well, this guy's not getting past me and he wasn't, he hadn't been too good. Right. Nelson Aguilar comes to mind. He, what, <laughs> sure. you know, took him at one seven years back. And so you thought, was that 14 or 15? Yeah. Yeah. Three or four years net back now. And, and that hadn't paid off a whole lot. Yeah. You know, uh, that, or that, Yeldon. That, and that's kind of, right sure, sure. And that kind of soured you on probably receivers at that point when, even Nelson Didn't help. Aguilar draft and such. I I, I wasn't taking them, but th- those that that year and a year before that, all those other you know the Paramans and the, all those kind of guys, Kevin Whites, the, the Kevin Whites and the Paramans and Parker, the, Devontae Parker I still hadn't panned out. Which right. I'm still I'm oh, buying still. Give me some cheap Devontae Parker for sure. Jay Wayne, uh, I guess kind of same question. You, you swinging for the fences most of the draft here, or are you just kind of trying to? play it safe or is there a spot where you maybe switch gears i i don't think that there's really a clear-cut answer to that question for me i i don't i don't either i'm not gonna sit here and say yeah i'm gonna swing for the fences that's kind of why i followed up with the question that i did a little bit yeah i I felt uh, that put you in a decent situation i mean Corey touched on it 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 depends on the makeup of your team i like to build a roster where i have a, a core of safe players and some risky players because I think you need someone in your lineup with some risk 
to to put you over the top. But I think you also need some guys in there that you need some Jarvis Landry. You need a strong need, core of of safety nets. Right. And so I, I want some of each. And when it comes to a rookie draft specifically, you know, I'm I'm looking at the overall makeup of my team and, and do I have any risks or do I have a bunch of safe players? And then it's really just I mean, who do you like? Who do you feel, you know, re deep down you know, I can feel it all the way down in my plums. Who, who do you want? It's two for one. You know, Take like to me, it. to me, Daryl Henderson is is a risky type player this year. That 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 I think is a guy like Kamara, where he has some upside, but you don't know if it's going to pan out. I, I I would I'm way higher on Kamara coming out of college than I am currently on Daryl Henderson. But I think there's going to get to a point in the late first round, early second round, where Daryl Henderson's sitting around, and you're like, do I? Do I take a swing for the fence on this guy who I saw hit a bunch of home runs in college, or not? And and I, I would I think I'm leaning towards not doing that because I don't like the player as much. But mm -hmm. if I really like the player, then I think I'm down to to take more of a risk. Mm -hmm. And I think you got to take guys that you like. I think and if you don't know if you don't know if you like a guy or not, then I think you should play it safer. Yeah, I think you should take the safer pick. But I, I think it just depends on who you like and the makeup of your team. And, and I don't think you can just pigeonhole yourself into how am I going to do this. It's got to come to you. It's got to yeah. be different in every situation. And it's going yeah, to no, change and evolve. I, th I, think, I think it's a decent answer from both of you guys. I think it's, it's, it's also very draft dependent. And back to the you asked him about Kamara and O.J. Howard. Like Unless I'm in a two tight end league where I have to start two tight ends, well, even premium. I'm probably not taking a tight OJ end in the first round. OJ Howard and Ingram round. were pretty transcendent players, and they did hold value pretty well. And now yeah. OJ Howard's kind of back up, and Ingram held was a fourth round pick. I mean, the, I, the year before, and now he's kind of fallen back. And those two have kind of flip flop right. areas. I, I had two four in 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 one rookie draft when when Ingram was a rookie, and I feel like he was a tear break there after that guy. It was a different tier of players. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a tier break kind of situation i felt pretty good swinging for the fences on this tight end even though i felt like i was good because i had eifert and i had doyle and maybe another guy and so i thought like i was just basically taking a luxury pick with evan ingram but i really liked the player mm -hmm. and i felt like he was a, a swing for the fences but he also basically closed the chapter on that tier of players and then now right. there's another <laughs> tier of guys that aren't quite in the same yeah. realm so if you're at like a tier break and you want to take a swing, and you like the guy, I'm down to swing for the fences. So I, I think that's a little bit of where I was heading with what I was saying is like just kind of dr draft by draft. It's it's where are you at? What does your team need? I know this is a little bit of a cop out answer, but it's just it, it's it's the kind kind of the way it goes. Well, people want to know what should I do? Like it it's different every time. Man. Right. You have to feel it out, and you can't. I don't want to tell you to do this every time because it's not going to apply every time. Right. It, it's it's so and it's just it's it's so fluid and in all these different situations. Do you want? That's, see, that was a good one. That's top well three. Done. That top was, three. Top three. It's, it's the new room. Just settle down. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. We need to get a couple. <laughs> You, and you've been hitting me with those weak this bush pops. These things have you can't been, even call them pops. He's now. really like setting me up to look better than it is. So can I jump in with a little clarity? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So now this thing's going around the room one time, what, what, and you what? say, "All right, crazy big co, what do you, or maybe little co? How do you think? <laughs> how is going to be bigger? Than, he's standing to make it look bigger. How you? Uh, well, no, you, new, lay, you lay down to make it look bigger. What happened? I didn't mean what? to say it. I meant to say him. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to say it. It was. Uh, it really, was the wrong word. really screwed up. Walked away from a good desk chair this morning at a yard sale. <laughs> Two hours later, Jason calls me and says, "You're going to need a chair." Scrambling, calling my neighbors to check and see if that chair's still out there at the yard sale. So anyway, um, how do you how do you hit a stand up triple? You know, if you're not sold on somebody, or like Jay says, maybe you just missed the tear break. Like last year in an FFPC draft, I'm looking, I'm at one ten, and Carry On Johnson goes at one nine, and I'm on tilt. And I spend the next two hours trying to trade that dude from 110 up to 19 to get carry on Johnson. And I just was getting killed. Couldn't get it happen. So I traded back, got a first round pick next year to get out of that pick because I was up, upset. But trading that 110 or the 15 or what have you, if, or even the 1 1 for a stud, like even if you are not dead set on a rookie and you're trying to maybe swing for the fence or hit that double hit that triple and not mess it up how are you switching gears keeping that open mind about 
on the clock, or day of the draft, leading up to the draft, bringing a proven player into it, getting something like, you know, trading. Last year, obviously, Doug Baldwin didn't get hurt preseason before we made his trade, but I, we gave away the 110 for Doug Baldwin before the draft last year. And super happy to get Doug Baldwin go for that price. Right. The year before, he was a third-round startup pick. All of a sudden, he's 30, and he's worthless. And yet, he hurt his knee in preseason, and that definitely put a damper on things. But mm -hmm. that's my, like... And they want to run the ball for, more for, than to me, in the league. Right. Well, they said they were doing that, but, and, you know, you give... I, Obviously, going back on it, it's like, I probably could have done something that, given what Doug Baldwin did last year, I definitely could have used 110. But the idea being the same, like for me, that was, I was a stand up triple all day long. Mm -hmm. You took the guess out of it, you took 110, turned it into Doug Baldwin, and now you got a Pro Bowl receiver that, you know, maybe he gets three or four more years. Right. And then which, he hurts his knee and he didn't. Which would kind didn't of be play like well. taking the guess out of it and just taking Philip Lindsay at the 1 5. Oof. Mm, womp womp some crickets on that one. <laughs> well, oh. I'm just saying. You just well, I mean, I know, I know. It's a one one year one deal five versus gotcha. one ten. Know, you know, there's know, a lot more guessing just, the farther. Uh, just, theoretically, just, theoretically, you talk to the guys that drafted uh, stoking some fire here. That drafted some bad some wide receivers in the first five picks sure. over the last five years, and tell me how that worked out. Sure. Um, but to, theoretically, the farther back you go, the more guessing you do. And right. just so you know, I'll trade the 110 this year for any Pro Bowl wide receiver. Yeah. You know, I, that's, I'll take a stand-up triple instead of swinging for the fences and maybe fouling it off and yeah. hitting it, you know, or like, striking out. I like that. I like that uh, idea for sure. All right. Well, that, that kind of wraps up that question. You, you guys want to do a little Carlos Hyde before we close up shop here? Sure. All right. Well, while we were here, news broke of Carlos Hyde being traded to not traded, signed. signed by the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, which, I mean, I love Lamp, like we talked about uh, in, in previous Patreon episodes, and I believe at the beginning of this episode, we touched on it a little bit. Anybody who's the Chiefs or Saints running backs, I'm, I want a piece of them. And now Carlos is in there. Um, he's at age 28. Uh, born in 1990, September 20th. So that would be 28. <laughs> Turning 29 as he'll, the season he'll, gets he'll going. He'll be 29 as the season rolls on. Um, never over 1,000 yards. A couple times really close. Um, never really 16 games to be over that 1,000 yards. I guess in 2017 with the Niners, he had 16 games started and was just under the threshold by 70. Um, but... Always a, a pretty solid touchdown scorer. Maybe not the quintessential uh, pass-catching running back, but I wouldn't say he's unavailable to catch passes. <laughs> unavailable. Um, I think he's got decent hands. It, they're okay. Uh, the, the year that he had 59 catches, he had 88 targets, and I believe he was pretty high up there in, in drop rate. So I don't think it was super great, but uh, he, he's, he's not a... He can't not catch. Like I mean, he's a, he's good enough. Um, so how do you guys see Carlos playing out on the Chiefs here? Is there a round value that you would establish here where you would go after Carlos? Are you excited about Carlos? It's a one-year deal. I think it makes him the highest-paid running back on the Chiefs currently. Um, not that it was a whole lot. It was like $1.9 or something like that. Right. So, it, I mean, it has to make you interested in Carlos Hyde. Andy Reid is the running back guy, and... The Chiefs are the Chiefs, and it kind of not that uh, Williams is not like this. He's he's not a small running back by any means, and and Carlos is a, is a definitely a bigger guy. So I would say he's the hammer kind of running back, but it's not like he's that much bigger than Damian Williams. So I mean, do you is Carlos having a role here? Is it is Damian Williams going to be the pass catcher? Is Carlos going to be the grinder and maybe take some goal line work away? Is there a value that you would like to establish on Carlos here early and often here? What are you thinking? I don't know how much of a value I want to establish on Carlos Hyde yet. Uh, I think if you have Carlos Hyde, you're ecstatic that he's now with the Chiefs and he's 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 a nice shiny lamp that the Chiefs have to use. I think the biggest thing for me is that it, it definitely takes away from your Damian Williams stock because you just saw them go out and sign a guy that's basically, I think, capable of doing everything Damian Williams did for them in Carlos Hyde. 
Uh, I think I would say are, Damian Williams is probably a better pass catcher. He's, he's probably a little bit better of a pass catcher, but I think Carlos is pretty strong. Has does have fifty nine receptions in a season on his on his career. Although you mentioned the drops, I think uh, I I don't know where I would put Carlos Hyde in a startup. I think uh, I think he's probably still going to get disrespected, and people people don't like Carlos Hyde for some reason. So I think uh, I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. I, I'm bummed if I have Damian Williams. I'm stoked if I have Carlos Hyde. I don't know necessarily a value of now going out and uh, obtaining Carlos Hyde via trade or in a startup. I don't I don't really know. Well, I'd love to see startup this year if he's that. Um, undervalued but just because like he is a shiny new lamp on one of the best lamp stores great lamp what, store you know yeah so if uh if he's if he if damian williams Dam, this is one of those situations where damian williams falls into startup draft a little bit for sure and if carlos williams doesn't come up i mean uh Hyde. carlos Hyde doesn't come up high enough then to balance that out it's just one of those things where and one, it maybe maybe they're A and B, maybe they're fifty fifty. Obviously, I think Damian Williams is a better pass catcher naturally. He's probably a little more swifter, uh, you know, getting just being a little bit more agile. Carlos is a huge man, but Carlos is a solid runner, and he's he's super smooth to be as big as he is. So for me, as Carlos as as a as a potential you know startup situation or in a trade or something like that. I would put some value on Carlos Hyde because it could be magical. It could absolutely be magical. That the two years ago when he caught all those passes for San Fran, yeah, it was a lot of forced it's situations because it was a horrible team and they pretty much didn't have anything else going on either. Um, but I will say, you know, just going forward, this is a similar situation to the Browns signing Carlos Hyde last year before the draft. I don't think anybody sees the um, the Chiefs investing in a running back like the Browns did that we all assumed the Browns were going to put some a, a decent draft pick into a running back. Then they got Carlos Hyde. We weren't quite sure how that would play out. We thought they would put a decent draft pick into one steal, but maybe not second pick of the second round with Nick Chubb. This is a very is a like this is the mo- this is a fantastic football move for the Chiefs. Just as signing Kareem Hunt was a fantastic football move for the Browns, now you switch it up over here for one point seven million for a year. Like that's one of the best deals in the league already for Carlos Hyde, a proven NFL running back who can do it all. He's not a all around perfect three down back, no, but he can do it all if he needs to. And if he just for Carlos Hyde, don't don't pretend like it hadn't been just stay healthy for my man for a while. And right. so if, if, if he if he comes in to, and if he's healthy on the Chiefs, it could be magical. So he's one of those guys, like if I'm in a startup and I've put together six or seven good guys and I don't know where it ends up being, but obviously a lot can change in a couple of weeks when the draft goes down. If But I don't think anybody yeah. expects the Chiefs to really plow into the draft capital into another yeah. running back with a big name. But I would be happy to throw Carlos Hyde on my team and well, see what happens. We don't know kind of how it shook down with the Browns. The Browns could have had a really high gra- high high grade on Chubb, and he just happened to stick around and f- kind of force their hand to say, "Hey, this guy's still around. Let's, exactly. We're taking this guy." And we've exactly. seen that the Browns are pretty willing to accept, "Hey, if there's some talent out there, we'll we'll scoop him up, even if it, if the it's not a necessarily a position of need." Which is the way you should play it, right? The way the Eagles played their defensive line the last couple of years, and it worked out, right? Keep him fresh. Uh, but now you have like I've been a huge Carlos Hyde fan and you know it really has been kind of stay healthy and it he went to the Jaguars in the middle of the season and it was it was weird and it didn't work out and that offensive line was banged up but well, the whole team was quit anyway but now, now you have a high octane offense and and they are definitely two stylistically different backs regardless of the size um mm-hmm. of, of the two which isn't is, I think one's 5'11 224 and the other one's six foot 230 um but carlos definitely runs with a lot more hammer to his game as i was saying you know i don't think this is going to be like the hammer to the kind of thunder to the lightning kind of deal but it really kind of could be Mm -hmm. um just getting away from their size in general but stylistically of running i think that that's more along the lines and i think carlos could easily have eight to ten touchdowns and 
you know, seven or 800 yards rushing here with no problem and, and still have 30 or 40 catches. Like, it's not like he's incapable of catching balls. So, I mean, all that being said, I mean, maybe that I set the bar a little too high and maybe they do. Maybe maybe somebody who the, the Chiefs had a higher round on grade, maybe he falls and they do end up drafting a running back. And they got they don't have Carlos Hyde on there for they got him on there for essentially peanuts, one point seven or nine or whatever. Peanuts. So who the hell knows what's going to happen? But it's still less more than they have Damian Williams on the books for. It's a great insurance policy. But I mean, the, you know, they, they the Chiefs could still end up taking a running back, even though they do have a lot more needs and they seem to just cheaply just fill up any sort of need that they had running back wise with Carlos for at least a year. Mm-hmm. Um, but to me, like, I mean, if you want like early, early two for Carlos, is that is that a, too egregious right as a, now as a trade? Yeah. Give away an early two for Carlos. Um, especially just judging on where this kind of running back class just kind of ended up for you. I can't trade for Carlos until Debo Samuel's off the board. No, oh. I'm taking Debo in my rookie <laughs> draft in the early second round. I'm looking for Debo. So when he if he so, if he gets uh, snaked if he get, if Debo two. gets snaked in front of me then I I might that might be something I was just look I was talking about earlier. I may be looking to do make a move like that. But two one to to two four is that like. You think you think that's too much for Carlos? I think it might be. It's too early today before the draft. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's too. It's, I think it's too expensive before the draft. And it, it may not. It may be in. You may be incapable of pulling that trade off after the draft. But you, somebody might be sleeping. And just I mean, be, if you're a dog shit team, then obviously you want nothing to do with that trade. But if you feel like you like, all right, so I have a team with Carlos Hyde on it, and things just got way more exciting for me. Right. Like, right. I mean, it, it was it was great. Hides on the Chiefs. It, it, it was great in Cleveland for a couple of games last year. Not great, but he was scoring touchdowns and doing mostly what you needed him to do. And then it, it kind of got pretty shitty once he got traded. You knew it really probably wasn't going to be super great. And, and I I said on the podcast that I didn't think that there was any way that he was going to end up as a Jaguar next year because there's no way that they're going to pay him the salary that he had. And they, they, they signed him as an insurance policy and they let him go. Good for Carlos. I think Carlos is still a, a really, really good running back. It's not like he's a trash running back. I think he's good. Like, it's not like you can't make a, he's going to be in the elite allegiance or alliance football right. league next year. Like this, this was a, a pretty good player. And as long as he was healthy, he was one of the top half of the league running backs. He's when he's healthy, he's forcing missed tackles. Right. And he's, running over you. He's a good running back. So, and so, you know, I think that's that's a nice piece for the for the Chiefs to pick up. And and, a, and a, this is going to be was the highest scoring offense. And they, they tapered off heavily at the end of last year. And so I think I think that's a, a really good situation for Carlos, a guy who has a decent nose for the end zone and can somewhat create on his own, whether it be power or a little bit of shake and, and still catch a couple of balls. So, I mean, I. I think if I'm ready to, to win a depth piece for my team, like an, an a early two and maybe not the strongest draft class ever, isn't isn't egregious in my mind. Benny Snell or Carlos Hyde? Because you can get Benny Snell there with that early. Two. I think you probably you're gonna end up being able to get Benny Snell at the end of probably the second round, unless he goes somewhere great or gets drafted higher than he thought. And he, and he could. He certainly could. I think I'll keep my early two for now. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm I'm kind of I could go. I'm I'm on a team with Hyde, so I could see what I could get for him. But I don't um, I don't think I would. It's not worth moving. Which, where, which league you got Hyde? Uh, the twelve man. Uh, the first one, like one of the first yeah. dynasties that we've ever, the yeah. twelve man. The, one one of the man. oldest what, running dynasties we got. The twelve man. Let me get him. Yeah, all right. right. Let me get it. Makes I got good. Kareem Hunt. Uh, he's, he's suspended. I got a win now team with Julio and Ty yeah. and those types of guys. Let it me, changes things up for you. Right. You, you got have, a late two though, huh? What do you got though? What do you got? Um, there? I don't know. I missed the playoffs with the third most points in the league, so I, I can't be that two far. five. I'm maybe. at two five, two six. What do you think about two five? I mean, I'll probably just roll with my lows because I got a team that's ready to win now too. Ah, roll with his lows. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, maybe, maybe you should, maybe you should be selling at all costs. But I've I've been a firm believer in Carlos, and now he's in an f- awesome situation. So, mm-hmm. and who knows? Like you said, we don't really know how it's going to play out. But I mean, if you're ready to go now, see, I don't think a two uh, like a two five. I wouldn't be itching to sell Carlos Hyde for right. two five. That's what, what I'm saying. What is two five going to really do for right. me? But if 
If they you make it through the draft, if I'm a trash team, it, then I'll take the two five. Uh, no, no, not necessarily because if you make it through the draft, and car and the, and the Chiefs don't have anybody that really that you can hang your hat on. And Carlos you Hyde think gets in, in there. season more value. Oh uh, yeah, sure. I, okay, I can get Carlos down with Hyde's that. putting yeah. up points on the Chiefs. Sure, then he could be way more valuable than the two sure. five. Or he it. could be just riding riding pine on the Chiefs. The, but she gave up the opportunity to get the two five. Come on, and then you could probably like if, still, you, if you're holding. Yeah, okay. At the, okay. At, yeah. at the end of the day, he, maybe he's riding That's pine. Fine. Maybe he's riding behind, and Damian Williams is out there crushing it. So you just trade him to the Damian Williams owner for a two next year as insurance going into the playoffs. Yeah. So you know, well, I, you got you just, just got to like Andy Reid on, on Carlos, uh, the, the running back whisper. I yeah. like Carlos Lamp, right? Yeah, Carlos yeah. Lamp. How it is? If it's being sold at the Chief Lamp store, I'm I'm buying. So f- fun conversation to have, just as the immediate kind of backlash took place. Just um, his market value will be established as we as we move forward here, but. You know, we talked about Damian Williams and how mo- in most cases for players like Damian Williams were cashing out because he was nothing and you got him for nothing. And I, almost 100 percent of the time, I would say ring the register, but it's too fun to, to, to ring the register for me right now with Damian Williams. And now this happens and definitely not as fun as it once was. Sure. Well, you got five weeks here between free agency and the NFL draft. Uh, and it all comes together. So if you have Damian Williams and you can go pick up Carlos Hyde to throw on your team for cheap, I don't mind doing that. And, you know, and then when there's between free agency and the draft and you know, these rookies falling in line, like you said, the market's going to be set on a lot of guys and the market will is going to completely do a pretty much reset in the next five weeks with everything that goes on. It happens every off season. Yeah. All right. Well, fun little Carlos chit chat. Sure. You're the only one in a in a chair. Yeah. Crushing that chair too. Loving it. All right. Well hamstring's about to blow off. We're excited about uh getting getting this video thing started. I know the, the everyone listening on audio, you guys are like you, you're idiots. This is terrible, <laughs> terrible radio. But anyhow. Nah. Uh, nah. Let's close up shop. Yeah, let's get out of here. Saturday, about to go have some fun on a Saturday night. It's the freaking weekend, baby. Wow. Let loose. Are we allowed to sing R. Kelly songs anymore? Ooh. Uh, that was probably. a good song back in the day, though. The toot, toot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the Chappelle remix was... I'm rolling that body. Spot on. Yeah, well... Eh. What are you going to do? Chappelle really crushes, though. He does. Well, let's get out of here. Uh, if you're listening on any of your platforms of choice, we would love a review. That would yeah, be so holler at nice. us. Hit Love us up you. with those reviews. You've been a listening lot of positivity for a while. on there. Ship over some more positivity. That's how we. <laughs> that's how we get by. Yeah, Ship it over. A, we get by with a little help from our friends. The more reviews, the more we pop up on other people's radar. That's that would be just so nice of you. If you haven't taken the time to do it, please do. If you have already, thank you so much. We're on all your platforms of choice: Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, iTunes. Hit us up on YouTube. I don't know. You might not see this particular video, but it's coming very soon. Oh, yeah. And uh, it'll be all up in your YouTube. Check that out. Hit subscribe. We upload a bunch of different videos and go check out the website, theffdynasty.com. And uh, if you're looking for some extra content, head over to the Patreon. Got some articles going up on theffdynasty.com. Yeah. Articles Articles are about to be hot and hot and fresh like Krispy Kreme. Mm-hmm. Hot, fresh hot now. now. Hot now. And if you're don't live in the South. I'm sure you're probably not nearly as excited about that reference. They don't have Krispy Kreme up in the North. I mean, it's we just, didn't. We didn't. There's a Dunkin' Krispy Donuts Kreme. in every exit, though. Yeah, huh? we. It was Dunkin' Donuts, but nobody knows about a hot fresh sign up there. <sighs> mm. That Krispy Kreme, <sighs> sort of ass. It's for real. It was. Done. They had, there real. was like Krispy Kreme in the grocery store, like just like pre old ass Krispy. Yeah, you don't. That's not the same thing. No. Man, that hot fresh now. We live right next door to one. I'm about to. I'm about, I just moved in next door to a Krispy Kreme. <laughs> yeah, Jay Wayne just moved in a block away from me. So <sighs> this is either going to be cool or the worst. <laughs> <laughs> the worst. <laughs> Don't go anywhere, cause I find you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty at Dynasty Bitco at IMC Myers at Jay Wayne's World. Check, check out over uh, the Patreons. It's a good time. Extra content. <laughs> Premium content. We'll if see anyone has a better word for content, hit us up. We, we're looking for one. We can't do... We're looking for a synonym. Can't say that too many more times. That, uh, that's a good, throw up. It's a good synonym for content. <laughs> 
We're rambling here. We're out of here. We'll see you Peace. next time.